Shalom Kharim, I'm Steve Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live, also Danun Institute of Biblical Research. And uh, I know the video that I'm going to speak on you speak with you guys today. It is going to air both on Danun Institute as well as Israeli News Live. I just feel like that this information is is very critical. And uh, so I think that it's imperative that we share this information with both channels. Uh, so those of you that are not into hearing uh, uh, biblical things, you may not want to tune in, but uh, I just can't encourage you enough to take the time to listen. And so, uh, you know, listen, it's not every day that you're going to hear this type of message, and uh, it's just very few people in the world that would be willing to really tell you the truth and dive into these things. We're looking at Matthew 24, and I'm actually starting a little further down in the chapter uh, because there's some very important things that I feel like have been overlooked for two millennia. In fact, probably not uh, the revelation of what I'm going to share with you has not been seen since the days of Yeshua. So I trust it's a blessing to you, and I just I want to quickly ask the, our, our Eternal Father to bless what I'm going to say before I speak to you. So, Heavenly Father, I ask you in your mercy that you would guide my lips and my tongue, that I would not speak anything that would be contrary to your word, but it would be a blessing and an edification for the people that listen here tonight, Father, and that it may touch souls. Those that have ears to hear, may they hear. Uh, and those that do not, you will be the judge of this. In the name of Yeshua, I pray so be it. Uh, amen. All right, so we get right into this real quick. Now, false prophets will arise and lead many astray, starting Matthew 24, verse 11. When wickedness multiplies, the love of many will grow faint. Uh, by the way, I'm reading from uh, Shem Tov's Hebrew Matthew. Uh, it's nearly verbatim like that of the English. There are some changes in there, or not, I shouldn't say changes, a little bit differences there. But again, if you, any of you that know Nehemi Gordon, uh, he'll let you know real quick, like it is obvious that the book of Matthew uh, was originally written in Hebrew because the Greek just doesn't catch those nuances that, that are used in the language, uh, but the Hebrew does. And I, I concur with his, uh, his findings on that. But I'm using this one because there's a few little insights that I can share with you that I think are a bit more compelling about what's coming in this latter day here. So anyway, the false prophets will, will arise and lead many astray. When wickedness multiplies, the love of many will grow faint. Whoever waits unto the end will be saved. Uh, and this gospel, that is, Evangeli, will be preached in all the earth for a witness concerning me to all the nations. Then the end will come. Now, I believe that is a direct uh, prophecy of the two witnesses. They are the ones that bring the former and the latter reign uh, here in this last day. This is the Antichrist, by the way, uh, and this is the abomination which des desolates, which was spoken of by Daniel, Standing in the holy place, let the one who reads understand. Then those who are in Judah, let them flee to the mountains. This is going to get interesting. Here we go now. Verse 17. Let's pay close attention to this verse right here. Let me see. I might be able to highlight this yeah, a little bit. He who is upon the house, let him not come down to take anything out of his house. You know, I've looked at this for years, and really, and even the next part, he who is in the field, let him not turn back to take his garment. That just sounds kind of odd, doesn't it? Maybe not as odd if we realize it's more of a metaphor. Let me show you what I mean here. Let's look at this from the Hebrew language. We're in the seventh verse right here. Ve'ashar al habayit. Lo yoed la korot shum devar me bayato. All right, in the Hebrew language, and with and which uh, uh, he which is upon the house, lo yoed, don't come down la korot. Now this is really a, 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 almost an odd place for the word la korot to be there. All right, so if you want to take it literally, don't come down that happens to take anything 
from his house. He's not talking about your physical house. He's talking about this house. He that is upon his house. In other words, the one that has been able to subdue and to control and has gotten victory over this flesh, not just over the things of the world, but he has got the revelation. He or she who has the revelation. When, you, when the time is coming, see, don't come down when the Antichrist time is here. Now, this is important because the Antichrist is coming to try to do what? The Antichrist is that is the abomination which desolates, which was spoken of by Daniel standing in the holy place. Let the one who reads understand. If you guys remember a while back, I said to you, the Antichrist, although they will build a third temple in Jerusalem, which is not of God, the true place where the Antichrist wants to sit is in your human heart. He wants to be right here. Well, he can't get here, so he's going to try to get here in your head. All right? This is what Yeshua is trying to warn you about. This Antichrist is coming. He's the abomination which desolates. What is he going to desolate? The human body, the human mind. They're coming out with the 5G technology. And by the way, where, where did I put that? I actually, I just got a book in by uh, Senator Patrick Kolbeck. Uh, actually, I talked to Senator Kolbeck earlier this week. And uh, because he is a uh, uh, an engineer, what type of engineer was he again? I forget exactly. Uh, we were talking about this. But I've seen his, uh, his presentation and uh, uh, Senator Kolbeck, he's an he's a engineer for NASA, so he understands the 5G technology and knows that it's demonic. Right? Well, between 5G, nanoparticles, developed by an Israeli company, thank you very much for those elites that want to control the brain, uh, between these things, breathing this in, microchipping, all of this, what is it? The Antichrist is looking to do what? To desolate the temple of God, which you are that temple. So when we begin to recognize what the Antichrist is coming to do, then you have to understand, those who are in Judah, let them flee to the mountains. He who is upon the house, you have control you have put on the full armor of God, as Paul speaks about, the helmet of salvation. It's much deeper than what people probably realize. Let him not come down to take anything, shum devau, out of his house. Right? Don't take nothing. Because the physical flesh is not what matters. You've got control, and you've allowed the Holy Spirit to dwell in you properly. He that, all right, watch this here. He who, is, he who is in the field, verse 18, let him not turn back to take his garment. Whoa. Does that mean possibly we're going to shed the flesh? Could be. And every, the whole time everybody's thinking about, oh, by the way, when tribulation comes, don't pack up all your belongings and run to the woods. In fact, if you even uh, half naked in your shorts, don't run back out. Uh, and get your get your shirt and uh, your trousers. Just go. No, it's not that. It's deeper. It's deeper. I my my thoughts. Woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nurse children in those days. Those mandatory laws, mandatory vaccinations. Maybe it'd be something that we've totally not thought about. Pray to God that your flight will not be on the Sabbath day, because then there will be great distress, which has not been from the creation of the world until now, and as will not be. Except those days were few, no flesh would be saved. But for the sake of the chosen, those days will be few. At that time, if one should say to you, Behold, the Messiah is here or there, do not believe it. And by the way, I read through the Hebrew on all of this, all right? So, you know, uh, there's, there will be a few little key points here and there that I'll bring up, but uh, but for the most part, this these sections here are translated pretty, pretty accurately. 
Because the false messiahs, now this is one mistake they made in here, and false prophets will arise and they will give signs and great wonders so that if it can be, they will come to lead the chosen astray. Now, it's actually pretty accurate. The one thing that caught my attention, though, um, let me just find where, where I was at there to make sure we're right in the English part. All right. All right, verse 24 in the Hebrew right here. All right, so we have uh, Mashiach, 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 uh, Sheim Yechol, wait a minute, oh, no, read the wrong, wrong line. Shekarim, Shekarim, all right, and then Venavi Hashakar, all right. Now the word Shakar is the word for lying, it's a liar. All right, so there will be li anointed liars. Now, see, this is in the plural. Now, the prophet is not uh, Navi, singular, as you would think. It does seem to be, it seems to be plural as far as the prophets, but the lie is singular. Whereas the anointed ones, they're telling lies, plural. And that just kind of caught my attention. I'm like, why would... Matthew write it like this. Why would he why would the prophets they put forth a single lie, but those that were anointed, which it you know, there's multiple messiahs, they're telling multiple lies. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's just something I caught, and I just want to make sure you're aware of that. Um so anyway, so that but the prophets they have one consistent lie, and they put the word in there for false, but it's the word lie. Okay, so then if they should say to you, "Behold, he is in the wilderness; do not go out. Behold, he is in the chambers; do not believe it. Behold, I tell you before it happens." All right. Now here's the funny thing. I'm reading this, and of course the one thing that keeps popping up in my mind is the recent dedication of the altar. Uh, of this portable altar they're planning on using in the third temple, and they're doing it right outside the old city, outside of Jaffa Gate there, uh, just to the uh, right of Jaffa Gate, if you're facing Jaffa Gate there, uh, on the very steps where Yeshua himself was being condemned, right? So they're doing this there. Now, and in doing so, they the, the one uh, British man was interviewing these guys, uh, and, and one was the head of the Sanhedrin, and, uh, and, and another was a rabbi, and, and, and he's asking them, but what about Yeshua? They said, Yeshua, he's not the Messiah. The Messiah is coming. And I couldn't help as I'm reading this here to realize that these are fake messiahs. Or whatever they're going to conjure up, this is prophecy being fulfilled. But the problem is, is, so much in the evangelical community are so much embracing the building of the third temple and they're expecting the coming of the Messiah, but they don't realize what the coming of the Messiah really is. The coming of the Messiah, or as Yeshua says, the kingdom is without observation. It's not going to happen like you think. Yes, we will look in the, in the heavens and be able to see that he's coming and know that his hour is nigh and that the angels and, and, and all the evil signs that are there, that destruction is coming on the earth. But there is a secret coming of the Mashiach in his second advent if we really pay close attention to the word. All right, now, so let me let me share with you, though. Because false messiahs, false prophets will arise, will give signs and great wonders so that if it can be they will come to lead the chosen astray. All right, then, if they should say to you, Behold, he is in the wilderness, do not go out. Behold, he is in the chambers, do not believe it. Behold, I tell you, before it happens again, Jesus said to his disciples, As the lightning comes from the east and is seen in the west, so will be the, uh, the coming of the Son of Man. All right, this is where we begin to start to get an idea of the signs in the heavens there. Wherever the body is, there will be gathered the vultures. I thought that was interesting. It's not eagles, it's vultures. At that time, after the tribulation of those days, the sun will grow dark, the moon will not give forth its light, the stars will fall from heaven, and the host of heaven will be shaken. Now, if you think about it, though, when it says in verse 28, wherever the body is, there will be gathered vultures, 
He's trying to, again, let you understand something. And again, I'll just quote it from Luke's gospel. And he said unto them, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And when he was uh, was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should, be, should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Wow. And again, notice what he says, neither shall they say low here or low there. What is he talking about? The same thing is quoting in Matthew. If they say he's in the secret place, go not out. If they say he's over here in the field, don't go there. That's what he's saying again. He's actually, Luke is writing it from the same standpoint. He just adds a little something that we didn't have before. And he said unto his disciples, the days will come when you shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you shall not see it. And they shall say to you, see here or to see there. Go not after them, nor follow them. For as the lightning that, that lightning out of, the, out of one part under heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation, as it was in the days of Noah. So shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. And don't forget that part. That's very important as well. All right. So the, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. All right? And that's something we got to understand. So, going back to Matthew. So he says, wherever the, wherever the body is, there will get, be gathered the vultures. They're just going to, in other words, what Matthew's telling you, they're just giving you a corpse. That's not the way Christ comes. He's the living God. As they said in another place, uh, when they said that, uh, you know, they're talking about everybody being dead, and Yeshua says he is not the, the God of the, of the dead, but he's the God of the living. Okay? At that time, after the tribulation of those days, the sun will grow dark, the moon will not give forth its light, the stars will fall from heaven, and the host of heaven will be shaken. Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and, and all the families of the earth will weep, and we will see the Son of Man on the clouds of heaven with a great host and with a dreadful appearance. And he will send his angels with a trumpet, and with a great shout, to gather his chosen from the four winds of heaven, from one end of heaven unto the other. Now, again, I can't help but wonder if these angels could be the two witnesses. Maybe. Maybe not, but maybe. All right? But notice, the only appearance of the Son of Man we get is a sign in the heavens. He will send his angels with a trumpet, with a great shout, to gather his chosen from the four winds of heaven, from one end of heaven unto the other. From the fig tree, learn the parable. This really got me here. All right? From the fig tree, learn a parable. When you see its branches and leaves sprouting, know that he is near to the gates. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all things shall be done. Now, a lot of times we liken this to be Israel, Israel being the fig tree. When we see her, when we see her putting forth her buds, we know that this generation sees the coming of the Mashiach. But it could also be that it's Christ in you. Just like the one that is on the housetop. That's got control. That has not allowed Satan to enter in to destroy his tabernacle. The temple of the Lord. When you learn that fig tree, the parable of the fig tree, it's the life that's in the fig tree that puts forth the bud, that puts forth uh, the branches. And of course, he is near even to the gates. It's a conjecture. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things shall be done. Heaven and earth will pass away, but of that day or that time, there is none who knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my father, but the Father only. Again, Jesus said to the disciples, as in the days of Noah, so will it be in the days of the Son of Man. Just as before the flood, they were eating, drinking, being fruitful, and multiplying until the day when Noah entered the ark. 
They did not know until the flood came upon them and destroyed them, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then if there shall be two plowing in a field, one righteous, the other evil, the one will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding in a mill, one will be taken, the other left. This is because the angels at the end of the world will remove the stumbling blocks from the world and will separate the good from the evil. Now Yeshua was called the stumbling stone, singular. Just think about that. Now, I also had brought, uh, uh, brought up to Matthew chapter 7, verse 19. And again, I look at this one because of the parable of the fig tree. Every tree which does not make good fruit, it is burned in the fire. Therefore, it is according to the fruits that, it, that, it, that is, by their deeds you will know them. Because not everyone who says unto me, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter in the kingdom of heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name cast out demons, and do many signs in your name? Then will I say to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity." Again, notice, every tree which does not make good fruit is burned in the fire. Therefore, it is according to the fruits that, 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 is, that is, by their deeds you will know them. There is that parable of the fig tree, when she's putting forth her buds and her branches. That's when you know Christ is near. Because what? The kingdom of God is not with observation, but the kingdom is nigh you, even in you. There's something about to happen in this world, friends. As they're so busy getting ready for this third temple, and they're putting out their Cyrus coin and their, their false, uh, false prophecies and all their lying prophecies and their lying anointed ones that are going to be coming forth. And it's interesting that the Messiah is a plural. You know why they're plural? I think it could have a lot to do because the Muslims have a Mahdi and the Jews have the Mashiach that is coming and even the Christians have their own idea of what the Messiah will be when he comes, but it may not come like any of them think. So there's so much lies about who the Messiahs are and then of course the prophets also are prophesying falsely as well. We're living in a very strange age. But there's got to be a former and latter rain that will help us. The question is, is will we hear when the hour comes? And has the rain already begun to fall? Think about it. I'm Steve Benoon with Israeli News Live, the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. If it's a blessing to you and you want to support the work we do, we thank you for your kindness and your support. Um, you can do so. We have the address here below the screen. And also, uh, you can give online at IsraeliNewsLive.org. Or join us over on Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash Israeli News Live. In fact, we just this weekend loaded up two more broadcasts there. And I'm sure it would be a blessing to you. I'm Steve Benoon.